the point, the title of my message today, this morning is Search Me, Lead Me. And it's out of Psalms 139 because I believe that one of the greatest keys of our life is if we can go to God, open ourselves up to him with that little simple prayer, yet it's so complicated and it has to be a courageous prayer where you're saying, search me, O God, lead me, O God. Psalms 139, if you have your Bibles, verse 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Man, look at that word anxieties. How many of us here, I'm not asking you to raise your hand, this is rhetorical. We all go through times where we're anxious about things, right? We have anxieties about this, that, or the other thing. Boy, 2,000 years over, 2,000 years ago, I mean, God wants to know our anxieties. God wants to fix, heal, repair our anxieties. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of the everlasting. This is the way to live. And the interesting thing about life, no matter where we're at, we're always on this constant search of who we are, what we're supposed to be doing. We are, right? It doesn't matter who you are. You're always on this constant search of who you are. Who am I? Who am I in Christ? And the only person that can help you really along that journey is Jesus Christ. For he formed you, he created you, he shaped you in perfection. It's great to have a pastor. It's great to have a mentor. It's great to have friends who can hold you accountable. That's all good, and you need those things. But at the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, it's always about you and Jesus coming to him with an open heart and an open mind and an open life saying, search me, lead me. And I also know how people think, and this will sound a little weird, but there was People in the first service like that, and I'm telling you, there's people in the second service right now like this, that you think to yourself, even though you may be a, a good Christian, you're coming to church, but at some point in your life, you've either thought, you've either thought this in the past, you're thinking it now, or you're going to think it in the future, and you're going to be thinking, why Jesus? Why do I need this Jesus? How can he actually help my life in 2016? with all this stuff going on? How can he actually help my marriage, my career, my relationship, whatever I have? How is, how is he really, how is he really making me better, maybe more spiritual? Is it even possible to be close to God? Is it even possible to have these real life encounters with Jesus that we hear other people talk about from time to time. And I know I'm, I'm talking about this and you're thinking, wait, this guy's crazy. I'm in church. I know why Jesus. I came, I came it's Memorial Day. I should, I should get like extra brownie points for that. <laughs> we just worship for 20 or 30 minutes. As a matter of fact, I actually raised my hand during worship. I mean, it happened to be like, a wave to a neighbor that then went into a yawn and I paused there for a second. I, I was raising my hands. I got there. I'm in church. I'm sitting here. I know why Jesus. And then the pastor opens up with this question. It's crazy. But I know we ask these questions. How does he help me? How does church Help me. How does reading my Bible help me in the things that I'm dealing with day in and day out? I'm saved. I'm already going to heaven. But what's my purpose here? If coming to church is just a pat on the back to make me feel better, I might as well just maybe go to Starbucks on a Sunday morning or hang out with a buddy or maybe play golf. Those things will achieve all of that sometimes even to a greater extent. And I know some of the spiritual people in here are thinking, well, wait a minute, that's, that is me. I do think that sometimes, but boy, you know what? I'm still coming to church every Sunday. I, I'm, I've got an obligation. I've got a religious duty. I'm going to check every spiritual box there is. If this church is open, I'm here. 
Hey, you can, you can come to church every day of the week. You can listen to podcasts. You can, have, you can have your Bible, and you can have all your fancy little versions of the Bible. But if it doesn't get into, into your heart, if you don't open yourself up and say, search me, oh God, lead me. If I just hear it and it gets stuck right there, I'm really not any better off than I was. And as a matter of fact, if you keep doing that over and over and over again, you probably are better off going to Starbucks with a buddy or playing golf or going fishing. Somebody knows what I'm talking about, right? We get in these ruts where we come into church and we say, you know what? Boy, yeah, I listen to Jake and the team worship, but every, every week it seems like the same song. Every song is the same song. And every message I hear, whether it's Pastor Josh or Pastor Rick, it's always the same message. It's not. You might be hearing the same message because it's not getting past your ear. Something's blocking that. Something's hindering the word from getting down into your spirit. And there's a way to change all that. Is there's a way to change that you open it up where you're saying, God, search me. Lead me. And these are tough questions. They really are. This is, this is tough stuff. And sorry if Memorial Day was looking for a pat on the back and just like a little extra before you go to your barbecue, but I promise it, it gets better. But I ask you all these questions and I just open up like this. My entire goal is to get you to think and to understand, wait a minute, that, that is me sometimes. Because in my case, that is me sometimes. And I'm no, I may be standing up here, I'm no different than anybody else. We all go through the same process of life. We're all kind of, in those terms, on the same journey. We start to question things. Search me, O oh God. Lead me. Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Obviously, Jesus does matter. If he didn't matter and if you didn't think he mattered, you just wouldn't be here this morning. You may not be walking those things out. It might be a little fuzzy for you. You may question it from time to time. But deep down, you know you know that it matters. You know that he can help your marriage. You know he can help your career. You, he, you know he can help your relationships. If you didn't really know, you wouldn't be wasting your time. This life is about knowing who we are and who we are in Christ. And Jesus Christ is the one person to help us with that if, if we let him. You know, our lives are, our lives are created for growth whether it's just our physical life or our spiritual life. And many times they parallel each other. Just think about our, our physical nature, right? We were, we were born and designed to grow, right? I, did, I didn't come out of my, my mother's belly, you know, 43 years ago looking like this. There was a process. That's how God designed it. That's how our spiritual lives are too, little by little, a more and more each time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore if, any wasn't in, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When we accept Christ in our life, man, it's a new day. It's a game changer. We are a new creation. Those things of the past are right there. They are in the past. We take on the characteristics and the attributes of Jesus Christ. We are new creations. We have unlimited opportunities, amazing potential to do great things, each and every one of us. That verse 17, man, when Paul writes that to me, that's one of the, the best definitions of what actually living like a Christian is, that I am, I am a new creation in Christ. We need, to, we need to get to the point in our lives where we embrace all that that means and walk into all those opportunities. And one of the quickest ways, and almost it's not even the quickest way, it's the way to do this, to come to God and say, search me, O oh God. Lead me, O oh God. Is we have to open up and be honest with ourselves. We have to have an honest assessment 
of where we are. And it's real easy to figure out. It's really, we have to see our life through God's eyes, not through our eyes. It's a totally different view. It's a totally different perspective of where we're coming from. An honest assessment of our lives is that our lives have to be based on scripture. This is where the meaning of our lives come from. We can look at our lives in a very variety of ways, but it really comes down to two ways. Am I gonna base my life on scripture, on this holy written inspired book? Or am I gonna view my life and run my life based on my emotions? You really have two choices. And many of us, if not all of us, from time to time, we're on the emotional side, right? If you just take a look at this morning, I guarantee you there's people that their day has been up and down, up and down, based on an emotional feeling. I measure up, I don't measure up, I failed, I didn't fail, versus in this book. If you just take this morning, you've been in here probably an hour, an hour or so, right? Your emotions have probably gone up and down based on maybe somebody, how somebody greeted you or didn't greet you, how somebody shook your hand or didn't shake your hand. Maybe I've already probably offended you by something I've said. Maybe you didn't necessarily like one of the worship songs or you don't like Jake's shoes. Sorry, I have no idea what kind of shoes you have on, buddy. <laughs> right? But my point is it's all these little things that are so trivial, yet somehow one of them gets in our mind and our emotions go crazy. And then somehow, you know, the guy didn't shake my hand in the lobby and then I'm giving up on Jesus. That's what happens, right? I've done it myself. There's a thousand ways. And we're gonna be there and live that every single time until we start to see our lives and assess our lives through scripture what God says about us, what God thinks about us. When we, when we base our lives on scripture, on God's ways, we win every time. And then something's gonna happen tomorrow, we apply the scripture and we win. And the next day, and we win. And we win, and we win, and we win, until we sound like Donald Trump, because all we do is win. <laughs> that wasn't a political statement, I just said it first service, so I said it again. I don't know why it popped in my mind, right? But we win. And I hate to even use this, this next parallel or whatever, but I use this example to my kids all the time, and it's really good. So just, but keep it in context. So half of you are going to think, yeah, this is probably a good point. The other half are going to think I'm a jerk. Sorry, I can't help it. I am who I am. But here's the deal. There's two types of people in life. Again, the context. Focus. There's two types of people. There's people that live with the Bible. And there's people who can live their life in emotions. And you would agree with me that the people that base their life in the Bible are winners, correct? Right? We're winners. We do what the Bible says. We follow Jesus. We're winners. Okay, if we don't do that, if you believe that we're a winner over here, the opposite has to be true. If you run your life based on emotions, based on the world crashing down here, what happens? You lose. You lose. So my point is, at some point in this little example, there's two types of people in the world. There's people that go their lives based on scripture or based on emotion. So in my, what I tell my kids all the time is there's two types of people in the world. There's winners and there's losers. Which one are you going to be? I hope you took that the right way. Somebody came up to me after first service and said, hey, I loved your win-loser little analogy. I said, great. I said, I probably offended somebody. And then she said, she said yeah, but if, if they didn't agree with you or if you offend them, they're probably on the losing end of that equation. <laughs> I'm just repeating what somebody told me. Search me, God. Lead me. But again, I'm going to stay on this losing thing for one second. Sorry. But when we get to the point in our lives when we're based on emotions and we're losing, we can't just walk away and say, you know what? I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. 
And we take a step back and we say, oh, God's grace and mercy is going to take care of me. And I understand that. I really do. And I'd be the first to admit that I, I need more of God's grace and mercy than anybody else here. And I should want it and need it. But sometimes we use that as an excuse for not to have God to search us now and walk that out. And when we're losing in those situations, I want you to think about something. The next time saying, oh, God, this is just the way it is. I'm going to spend a turning with you, which is the most awesome thing, obviously. That's, that's our ultimate goal. But the next time we say, oh, God, your grace and mercy is so great. I'm just going to sit here and, you know, just let all this stuff happen. Change that emotion. Change that emotion to say, you know what? No, I am a new creation in Christ. The past is behind me. The future is is in front of me. I have the ability right now in 2016 to take on the characteristics of Christ. I have every attribute that he has. I can walk out in that. I can live a peaceful life. I can live a happy life. I can, I, I can be a great Christian. I can get closer to Jesus. I can know him. I can have him lead me. Amen? We are a new creation. We are created for growth. Again, if you look at a baby, a baby is a four, five, six pounds. It's a, they're classified as a newborn, an infant, a toddler, adolescence, preteen, teenager, young adult, whatever it is. Somehow my wife got trapped in the teenage years. I'm not sure. <laughs> but in the same way they get their nutrition, right? You feed them breast milk, formula, little rice cereal. You know, then you put you know, more cereal in, in, in the bottle, and then it's like the baby food. And it doesn't work the other way, right? I love steak. I love barbecue. We're going to barbecue today, ribs, steak, red meat, whatever. Well, I can't, what nourishes me and gives me nutrition is not going to give a three-week-old baby nutrition. And I can't eat the baby food, nor would I want to. You have to, you have to take in. It's a process. I know what you're thinking, oh, that, that the kid shouldn't have red meat anyway, it's going to kill you. Well, I, you're, you might be right, but it's good. <laughs> and for all you vegetarians out there or vegans or whatever the new, like, I'm going to lose 55 pounds in five and a half days because I'm not eating red meat, that's great. I love it, man. If you're doing that, keep doing it. Go for it. I mean, really, it's a great thing because the way I think about it, that just means there's more meat for me. But when a baby isn't growing, something's wrong. Something's wrong. It's just the same with our life. If I'm not growing spiritually, I have to take back, step back and take an honest assessment of my life and say, wait a minute, something's wrong. What am I going to do? Something's wrong. I have to say, search me, oh God. Lead me, oh God. Show me my ways. And many times we get in a rut where, you know, we just want to feel better about ourselves. Again, we want that emotional, you know, well-being or whatever to be off the charts. So we go to a buddy and we get bad advice. We go to a buddy, you know, maybe our marriage is in trouble. We go to a buddy who's never been married. We go to one of our, you know, buddies for parenting advice who has no kids. Get career advice for somebody that hasn't had a job in 30 years. Or, or worse yet, we want, we're having a spiritual struggle like I'm talking about today, right? We're saying, okay, why Jesus? Is he really important? What can I do? And then we talk to a friend or a coworker who, who doesn't believe in Jesus. Well, what do you think they're going to tell you? They're on their own answers. They don't have the answers. Jesus is the only person that has the answers for our life. We have to come to the point where we say, search me, O oh God. Lead me, O oh God. And I have no idea where I'm at in my notes. You do, we don't just... Get through life. We live it. It's like my boys. I don't want, Jack's not a teenager yet, but we have two teenagers for the most part. So what do teenagers do? They consume large amounts of food. They're not the biggest kids in the world, but they're growing, right? So what happens? It's like 3 o'clock, 3.30, whenever they get from home from school, they eat dinner. And then at 5.30, 6 o'clock, what do they do? They eat dinner. And then usually we have like a ball game or, or a church event or a church service. And then we get home about 10 o'clock at night. And what do they do? They eat dinner. 
but they're going through a, a point and a period in their life where they need the nourishment. They won't always be like that. But we have to understand that there's points in our life where, man, we have to, this thing has got to nourish us. Obviously every day, but there are times when we need more than others times. It's just the way it is. And we have to understand that and know those times. We have to maybe just stop, put on the brakes and say, oh, God, search me. Lead me. You may not have anything terrible going on in your life. It may be all good stuff. But there's a huge difference between good stuff going on in your life and God's stuff. They don't compare. And once you get a little taste of the God stuff, you always want more. You always need more. We need God to reveal the truth to us, reveal what we need to change. You go to him. Your friends don't know you. You're great to have friends, but your friends don't know you. Your spouse doesn't know you. Your kids don't know you. Your mommy, your daddy don't know you. I mean, just think about it. You don't know yourself. So how would you expect somebody else to know you? They can all support you and, and, and lead you and help you and give you some friendly advice. But Jesus Christ is the only one to change that. And what we're doing is we're asking God to do what exactly he says he's going to do. That's what we're asking God. We're, God. we're coming to God and we're saying, God, I want you to do for me. I want you to search me. I want you to lead me. I'm asking you to do for me what no one else can ever do. At the end of the day, that's really what's going on. No one else can do for you. You can look, you can look, you can read, you can talk, you can study, you can listen to podcasts, you can do whatever. But only God can really search you. Only God can really lead you. Only God is really the one who knows you. He created you. He shaped you. He formed you. It's like if you're a parent, how many times have you said to your kids, you know, do something wrong or good, and you're like, yeah, I knew it. Remember, your mom and I created you. I know. That's not even the level. Yeah, we had a part to play in it, but Jesus created my kids. And you come in here and say, well, wait a minute, I've been burned by Jesus before. I'm in a mess. Well, first of all, you haven't been burned by Jesus. You've got yourself into into your own mess for whatever your set of circumstances is. Jesus didn't get you in any mess. But sometimes we think that with our emotional barometer, and we say, wait a minute, I tried this once and it didn't work. How can I trust him? How can I trust him? Well, I'll just say this. I'll say, you can trust him because he loves you. Everything he ever does is out of love. Everything he is, is out of love. If I look at my kids, I love my three kids more than anything in the entire world. I can't imagine anybody, anything, ever loving my kids more than me. But Jesus Christ loves my kids way more than I do. I'm not capable of loving them like he loves them. We need to come to him and say, search me. Lead me. Now, my, now my, kids know my, my kids know that I obviously love them profusely, but they also have to come to realize that Jesus Christ is the ultimate lover of them, that Jesus Christ is the ultimate father. Amen? Yes. And sometimes Jack leads me to a story. Jack, he's my little, uh, I don't know, mischievous, mischievous one or whatever. So... <laughs> He sends a text. He grabs Christy's phone, and he sends the text. He meant to send it to Little Mike. He sent it to me. So the text came across as Christy. It's supposed to go to Little Mike, and it said something. I can't remember exactly. He said, hey, just, oh, I know what it was. Just want to let you know I love you more than I love my other kids combined. <laughs> and we were on a trip one time, and he came up to Brooke. I think this was when we were in Disneyland, I think. Disney World, whatever, sorry. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) By the way, when my wife sends out a Facebook post with her at Disney, that's from like a trip a long time ago. We're not there every week. I get calls all the time. Are you in Disney? No, I'm not in Disney. (laughs) But anyway, I think it was when we were at Disney, 
we were walking down one of the streets there, and Jack went up to Brooke, and real serious, hey, Brooke, I just want to let you know, and I don't really know how to tell you this. She said, I, I overheard mom and dad talking. They like me a lot more than they like you. <laughs> Safe to say that will never happen with Jesus Christ. I mean, what I'm talking about this morning, this is, this is tough stuff. This is courageous stuff. This is me with all of my faults, all of my sins, making myself open to my creator saying, oh, God, search me, lead me. I want to be all that you want me to be. In 2016, I want my life to be marked by Jesus. I want my life to be marked by by growth. I hear from Christians all the time, oh my gosh, being a Christian is kind of boring. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, some, when I hear that, I'm thinking to myself, somebody's messed up. I'm either messed up or you're messed up because I don't really, my life sometimes I think is an adventure. I'd like to like hop off the roller coaster sometime. To me, it's exciting. I look at my life, as, and I tell this story all the time, but I just show it as the power of God, and God can take one just not very smart or talented or any individual and turn it into just a person who's just radically on fire and trying to carry out whatever he wants done. I worked at a beer company for 15 years. Then, I, then I'm a pastor at a church. I was able to be a police chaplain, a foster parent. It's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. You say, okay, what are you going to do next month? I have no idea. I'm trying to get through today. I don't know. So all your boring Christian life, man, if that's you, I don't know. Maybe have God search you because I don't, I don't even know. As you can tell, see, I'm confused. I don't even know how all this stuff happens. But sometimes that's what happens when you just go to God with an open heart and say, search me, show me, and then give me the strength and the courage and the wisdom to walk that through. I'm telling you, if you live like this, if you go to God and open yourself up like that, just like that song said, when I call, he answers. We're asking God to do what only he can do in our lives.